Hello and welcome to the long form contract case study webinar. This webinar will help you understand when to use the long form contract with the aid of a case study. Before we start, a few things to take note of. This is an online webinar produced by the ICT commercial strategy team with specific learning objectives. The content of this module is not intended to be comprehensive, nor does it constitute legal advice. The objectives of this webinar are to understand the New South Wales government requirements for procuring ICT products and services, to understand the fundamental elements of the Procure IT long form contract, and to identify potential risks and essential items needed when building the long form contract. A bit of background on how we buy. New South Wales government agencies can buy ICT services by engaging in either of the two ways. The New South Wales government contract or panel contracts, like the whole of government hardware contract 999, or from suppliers approved under the pre-qualification scheme, the ICT Services Scheme 0020. There are two categories of suppliers on the ICT Services Scheme. Registered suppliers who are signed up to provide services for contracts which are up to $150,000, which are deemed low risk, and advanced registered suppliers who can be engaged with for work over $150,000, essentially considered high risk. When engaging with suppliers on low risk contracts, you should use the short form ICT general contract terms. But when you engage suppliers on high risk contracts, you will need to use the long form procure IT contract. To get a copy of the contract, you can navigate procure point by clicking on before you buy, and then clicking on the standard procurement contract templates, which will take you to um, the Procure IT Framework version 3.2. And when you click on it, it will take you to a beta website, which houses all the contract documents. The long form contract can be found by clicking on the link provided. The latest and greatest version of Procure IT, which is Procure IT version 3.2, went live on the 1st of July 2017 and became mandatory as of the 1st of September 2017. Please note, this webinar will not address the changes brought by version 3.2. Let's now look at a case study to understand when and how we use the long form contract. In this case study, we will review a department's request for assistance in determining the best course of action when purchasing under the Procure IT framework. The department has certain specifications for the job. They need a system which automates their day-to-day -day records and tracks documents. They want hard copies converted into soft copies. They want 24 by 7 access along with tight data and privacy securities. Costs. They have obtained quotes and the contract value is likely to be under the $250,000 mark. But the department's past experience has made them cautious. They've lost data in the past from data migration. The suppliers want to employ contractors. And amongst other things, their preferred supplier wishes to limit, to limit their liability only to $50,000 for an over $150,000 contract. So let's see how we can advise the agency to navigate all this while adhering to the Procure IT framework. At the onset, the first basic question which needs to be addressed is, which form would you recommend the department to use? The ICT long form contract or the short form contract? The correct answer is the ICT long form contract, as the work being engaged in is worth $250,000, which is over the $150,000 mark. 
the short form contract is used for contracts which are under $150,000. Now we need to start thinking of some of the elements which will make up the contract, keeping in mind the requirements of the job at hand. Given that one of the requirements was data migration, where would you recommend that the data migration details be listed? Would it be in the customer contract or the general order form or under item 21 of the general order form? Item 21 would be incorrect as it outlines what liquidated damages are to apply. If you chose customer contract, that would be partially correct. The correct answer is the general order form. Data migration details are well covered in the general order form module 9. Let's now examine given the scenario what items should be implemented on the general order form. Let's take a few moments to look at the three options. Option two would be the incorrect option since it does not include a customer representative item which is detailed in the scenario. Option three is partially correct since it captures all elements, but two of the item numbers are listed incorrectly. Option one is the correct answer as it includes all the items which need to be covered off across all the elements in the scenario. Another question to consider would be, can the department limit the liability sort as the supplier wished to limit the liability to $50,000? The correct answer is no, the liability can only be limited if the contract value is greater than 20 million. Let's conclude with the item on subcontractors. Would the department need to include any subcontractors in the customer contract for confidentiality? Would it be item 28 and 35 or would it be item 22 and 36? Item 28 and 35 are the correct items to be included. Item 28 covers any subcontractors required to sign a statutory declaration form. And item 35 is for contractors to arrange subcontractors to execute a deed of confidentiality. And with this, we have reached the end of our webinar on the ICT long form contract. We hope you found it useful. For any feedback or questions, you can reach us at nswby at finance.nsw.gov.au. Thank you.